Hey everybody, we're back for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This time it's episode 83, and this is the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts, like today's show about the value of destination training. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you didn't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and excellent apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome our new listeners. Thank all of you that are coming back again. Now, if you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more or buy over at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are on a different site, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From either site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and you really should. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. So today's episode is about destination training. Now, what is destination training? And that's a term that I may have just made up. And if I did, I'm sorry. And if I'm stealing it from somebody else, I'm doubly sorry. But bottom line, it's you doing your martial arts training in a different location, usually overnight and usually for multiple sessions. So the different types of destination training, you know, things like a seminar series that happens over a weekend or a summer camp style, you know, maybe out in tents or in cabins over a long weekend or maybe even a week uh, or even the, the training camp style model that's popular in the MMA and Muay Thai worlds where you go and you just train for, you know, could be days or, or a week or, or multiple weeks, right? Why do we care like everything else we talk about on the show why does that matter why would we even talk about this and it's because there are some really unique benefits inherent in that training model that you're not going to find at a typical one to two hour a week or, or even a day class so the way most of us train you know two three maybe if we're lucky four or five days a week we go to our martial arts class for an hour maybe two or three and then we go back to our lives and that works really well but there are some things that you don't get with that kind of a setup that you get with destination training and so the first one is that when you're out of your normal location your martial arts school you're going to be looking at things differently we all tend to fall into patterns for a lot of us we tend to line up at in the, the same place in the ranks and maybe sometimes with promotions we shift around but even our perspective of where we are in the room is often similar so getting us out of that stable environment uh some might say tired environment if you've been training a long time can really open your eyes to doing some things differently you're generally going to have different training partners and that really helps a lot of people step up their effort. We don't want to look bad. We don't want to make our instructors, our school look bad. So when we go elsewhere, we tend to rise to the occasion. We give 100%. Whereas, you know, let's be honest, you know, most of us try really hard in class, but when something's on the line, when there's a reputation or when you're at a competition, you know, we, we all tend to find, most of us tend to find a little bit more in the tank. Uh, and I don't just mean going harder, but just being switched on for a longer period of time, which takes effort. Because there are those different people involved, both instructors and the people that you're training with, you're going to learn the ways that they do things. And that includes the martial arts elements. You know, you'll see people holding their stances, their their punches, their kicks, their blocks in a slightly different way. And you can learn, you can understand why they do things in that way, which is going to help round out your training. But you're also going to learn more about some of the more mundane things that we don't talk about in classes, but still matter. You know, where do you get your equipment? When do you eat? What do you eat? Um, you know, things like that, that especially as the show grows, I think everyone's come to realize that I view martial arts not just as a hobby, but as more of an athletic pursuit, the physical elements anyway. And I think it's important that we embrace that side of it and train like athletes so we can get more of the benefits. Of course, if you're at some destination, you're probably going to have different instructors and different instructors tend to see things differently. And 
that's going to help you improve. The more sets of eyes, the better. Uh, as I was putting together the notes for the show, one of the things I was really thinking about was this part of it and how I really enjoy training with different instructors because it doesn't matter who it is, they all find something that I can work on and that's really valuable to me. And I think that that's one of the things that I see from martial arts schools where they have multiple instructors. The Not, not to throw anybody under the bus or... It's not even what I mean. Not to say that a school where there's a single instructor is bad because it's absolutely not. But I think everything else being equal, when there are different instructors that are on the same page in the same school, then I think the students tend to benefit because different instructors see things differently and can present material slightly differently. And students, martial artists, we tend to learn slightly differently from each other. So having that variety, I think, is really valuable to your overall training. And of course, if you're somewhere for a week or a weekend, you get to focus on training instead of it just being part of your life. You know, our typical days, we go to work, we get out of work, we maybe have a an hour or two, some of us eat, some of us don't, and then we go to martial arts class. Whereas with destination training, it's typically you wake up, you get ready to train, you train, you take a break from training, you go do some more training, um, maybe have some lunch, you go back to training, right? So you get to really focus on that and not worry so much about the other elements of your life, your job, your family, your pets, because you are at a destination. And of course, with all these new people that you're around, you're bound to develop some new friendships, at least if you're open-minded and you're you're trying to meet people, if you're open to meeting people. And I think that that is probably my favorite part of attending these events is that I've met some absolutely wonderful, wonderful people, people that have been on the show, people that are coming on the show, people that I hope to have on the show, right? So... Um, the more people that you are around, the more martial arts friends you have, really the more opportunities that you're going to have to attend either other events, with a other destination training events or tournaments, or maybe you or someone you know is going to move to another area and, hey, now there's already a network of people that you know that you can tie into or you can help them connect with. And really just it, it helps break down barriers. It helps... Uh, connect the wider martial arts community. I think that's really important. And of course, the last benefit, you get to train a lot in a short period of time. You know, you you attend a, a weekend event and you, you might be training 15, 20 hours across two days. And, you know, that that's fantastic. For a lot of us, that's a month's worth of training in two days. Now, when we think about all of that training condensed into such a short period of time, there are some benefits. There are some other elements to it that you may not realize. If it's a focused event, uh, meaning that, that there's a, a, a narrower set of information that'll be presented, and sometimes that comes out of a single organization having an event for their system, for their students, and really having almost a syllabus, you know, more like a class might have in, at a university. The progressions can be a lot more incremental, uh, especially when you take something new or something really complex. And I think the best example, consider a form most of us train in a martial art that has forms, be they tul, pumse, kata, whatever you call them. Most of us wouldn't learn one of those in a day, you know, in a single class. But over the course of a weekend, you generally can because there's so much time being spent on it. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be something that's complex in the number of moves or the arrangement, but you could take something like... Um, like the sidekick, you could really go deep into what a sidekick is and get into minutia that you may not be able to get into in a 60 minute class because there's warm up, there's all these other things. And because the instructor, let's be honest, is trying to create an environment that appeals to everybody. So 
as you all know, I'm a nerd and I'm not just a martial arts nerd. So I really enjoy when I attend these destination events, when some of the instructors go super deep into be it application or the biomechanics or what, whatever it is of something in particular. And if that's something that you find valuable or enjoyable, these events are probably right up your alley. Now, everything isn't roses. There are downsides. And most of them are physical. It can be really taxing on your body. If you're used to training an hour a day, two to three hours a week, to train 10, 15, 20 hours across two days, three days, even one week can be exhausting. And if you're not ready for it, it can lead to injury. It can lead to, you know, maybe at the very least, not getting as much out of the experience as you otherwise would. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, you might not have a lot of fun. Something to be aware of going in. And it can also be a lot to take in over such a short period of time. And I see a lot of people taking notes at these sorts of events. Uh, most events do permit something like this. And I think that can be really valuable. I've seen other people where, um, especially when there's there's multiple sessions, where, you know, there's choice. And I think the best events do have that. People from the same school or, or training partners will break it up. So I'll go to this one, you go to this one, and then over the next couple of weeks, they compare notes. And of course, taking notes is important. So you can share that information with your friends. And that kind of gives rise to, to the thought that there, there's really a way to approach these. You can't just jump in with both feet, or I, I guess you can, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to get the most benefit out of it, if you want to leave with the most knowledge, I think there's a mindset you want to go in with. You can't hit every session with 100% intensity. You're going to be fried. Um, you're going to be so focused on that, you're not going to be as available mentally to what's going on around you. Because it's not just the people that you're learning from. It's not just the instructors. It's often the people that you're training directly with or next to. The more that you're willing to empty your cup, if we want to use that imagery, the more you're going to walk away with and be willing to, let's go back to that image, fill your cup back up with information from others around you and not just the direct instructor at the session that you're at. Most events are going to have some kind of a schedule for you. And I think it's really important to take a look at what's available, what really calls out to you and to prioritize and to build your day around that. If you've got a session at the end of the day, that's really, really important to you. There's nothing wrong with assuming that it's permitted in the event that you're attending. Uh, skipping a session before or, um, you know, taking a nap. You know, if, if you're really wanting to get the most you can out of that, you've got to be honest with yourself physically, mentally, so you can go into it prepared. And remember that sometimes the best education isn't even in the sessions. You go to one of these things, you're a martial artist hanging around other martial artists. What are you guys going to be talking about? Martial arts. People are telling stories. Uh, to be honest, a good part of the inspiration for this show from Martial Arts Radio came from my love of the stories that people would tell at these events and my wish that they would happen more often. So we took that concept and now we strong arm people, not really, we just ask them to come on the show and tell their stories. But you're probably going to be off telling stories or comparing notes and Sometimes those notes are actual martial arts application. and That's great. I mean, it's all about sharing at most of these events. So what kind of things have I done? Uh, you know, I grew up with the, the yearly summer camp model, you know, sleeping in a tent, hanging out outside, getting a sunburn, training in the grass. And I have a lot of really fond memories of those. But I've also been to some weekend and long weekend overnight seminar series, kind of all-inclusive things. And those 
tend to be marketed more towards the adults. A lot of the summer camps tend to be marketed more at children or families. And both are great. And I love the environment, both of those, but they're different. And of course, I, I have a lot of friends. Quite a few of them have been on this show. I'm not going to single them out, but I think you guys can probably figure out who they are based on how the conversations went. And I love having those friends, building those relationships within the martial arts, because I know I can travel pretty much anywhere and have somebody I can train with, or at the very least, a couch to crash on after training, right? And I just find that really valuable. And it's it's made my life better building those relationships. I tend to walk away from these experiences with a lot of new information. And, and by the end, usually not even the end of the last day, my brain's full, I'll be honest. And I don't always go to all the sessions, uh, especially towards the end of a weekend. But that's how I approach it, because I get really excited. And I need to be better about slowing down as I go through a full weekend of training. But it's hard, right? That's okay. It's always something to work on. And I feel really blessed that these early experiences, these early summer camps, my original instructors were really open about the fact that they didn't have all of the answers, that what they taught, and these were two different martial artists that were married that had been raised in really three different martial arts that had spent their lives learning from others as well. So there's a lot, a lot of information coming in. But even still, they said, you know, we don't have all the answers. So when we put together an event like this summer camp, they were inviting people of different arts to come in and teach things differently. And I really love that. And I think that that's probably my favorite thing is to learn how different people do different things. And it, I know it's made me a better martial artist. And we've talked about it on the show. And I think it, it extends out to these sort of events. So hopefully I've convinced you that these are valuable. Hopefully you've done several of them before and you're really just kind of comparing notes and seeing what I think about this. But if you haven't, how would you go about choosing your first one? The first step is to talk to your martial arts friends. I can't imagine there's anywhere in the country where there isn't something like this nearby. They may be large, they may be small. I mean, I know of a few that are really large that attract an international audience. And then I know some of them that are almost tiny. I mean, inter-school events, maybe it might be one in one or two other schools coming and joining together for the summer and, and hanging out. And those are great too. You know, there's really no bad format. But what you want is important to figure out. So talk to your friends, figure out what's out there, what's available to you, and pick one and go. And if you had a great time, go again. If you can go to more than one, pick different ones and, and you know rotate through them. Find the ones that you love and recognize that some of them are going to be great some years and maybe not so great other years. And that's okay. And you want to consider the costs, you know, not just the cost of the event, but the logistics of getting there, uh, what do they provide for amenities? Do you, do you have to bring your own food? Is food provided? You know, just factor all that in. Look at the number of sessions and not just who's headlining those sessions. A lot of events will hire one big instructor and then kind of pack the rest of the event with people that work for free. And not that people who volunteer their time are necessarily bad instructors, but it's just something to keep in mind. So that brings us to our event, the Martial Arts Weekend. And yes, we have really boring names for a lot of our things. Martial Arts Radio, Martial Arts Weekend. Yes, we do have some other things on tap that may have better names, but we did get some positive feedback on the name for our tournament, the Martial Arts Showdown. So, you know, we didn't just call it Martial Arts Tournament. Okay, we, we can pick names once in a while. So our event, what is it? When is it? All those details. Uh, rather than spend a ton of time hitting you with a lot of details, because hopefully this episode of the podcast will be listened to not just now, but in the future, 
So just kind of go over the highlights of our concept. The Martial Arts Weekend is an overnight, meals provided, you know, kind of all-inclusive seminar series. Uh, It's going to run from Friday night through Sunday, just before dinner. And we're going to have different instructors offering a lot of different sessions for each seminar session block. You're going to have at least two choices. Uh, We're currently working down our third track. And our, let's call it hook, because all of these events have something that they're using as a hook. Ours is that we're making it mandatory that the instructors that we bring in are also going to learn, take sessions from other instructors. And I think that's really important. When I think back over the different events that I've been to, the ones that have been the best have had the best environment. And that environment was made a lot better when the instructors were also students. So one of our taglines is that you don't just get to learn from these people, but you get to learn with them. And we're really expecting a a significant positive impact from that because that's what I've seen and what I've seen it happen elsewhere. We've kept it really affordable, especially considering everything you're getting, private room, all your meals, event shirt, and all that, martialartsweekend.com. So as simple as you get, martialartsweekend.com. There's a link over at the show notes page at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can check that out there. And that's really it for that chunk of it. So that's the subject of destination training and really like to hear what you think. Now, personally, I love this stuff, probably picked up on that. I'm going to be teaching at a number of events around New England over the summer, some of the bigger events, some smaller private events, and just looking forward to meeting a lot of new people, of course, at our event. What events have you attended? What did you think of them? You know, don't quite want to get as deep as reviews, but, you know, give us some thoughts, whether it's on the show notes page, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, or if you want to shoot us something over social media, we're on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, usernames Whistlekick everywhere. Give us a shout. Let us know what you think. Don't forget, you can find all of our episodes on YouTube. You can leave a comment there as well. Now, if you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a show topic, go ahead, hit us up. There's a forum over on the website. You could email us, info at whistlekick.com. Whatever works for you, that works for us. And of course, you can learn more about all the great stuff we make at whistlekick.com. That's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.